Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the JG Maker Artist D. So this is a new printer that offers something really unique with its dual extruder. So in this video, we're gonna unbox it, set it up, and do some prints. All right, so let's get started. So on the front of the box, we can see the picture of what it looks like, some of the features, silent board, high accuracy, dual extruders, and it's pre-assembled, which is nice and probably explains why this box is so big. And this is the top of it, and here I have a little calibration cube so you can kind of see how big the box is. It's very large. All right, so let's go ahead and open it up. Now I've never reviewed a JG Maker printer before, so this is gonna be my first time. And plus this being a special featured printer, this should be interesting. So yeah, I definitely need to stress how big this box is. So right on the top, we can see they're using the white foam, the soft kind. And there's a little note here that says, before turning it on, refer to the instructions on the SD card. So I'm guessing that's where our paperwork will be. And looks like this is a new trend gonna be happening from now on as everything is going more digital. Me personally, I still would prefer some kind of documentation and instruction manual, but it is what it is. So let's go ahead and start pulling some of the stuff out here. Okay, well, I guess I spoke too quick because there is a user manual and it's a nice quality one, really thick pages, the really good explanation and layouts of everything. Oh, very cool. Well, I'm really pleased to see that they included a user manual. So it looks like we get a box with parts and tools and we'll go over that in a second. Looks like some brackets, clean out brushes of some sort, ribbon cable connectors, two filament holder brackets with filament detectors. And there are two of them because this is a dual extruder printer. All right, so once we pull this off, we can see the gantry. And you guys can see how oversized this box is because even the top portion of the printer easily fits in there. So they overpacked it, which is definitely a good thing. Well, let's see if we can pull this thing out. So it's snugged in there really good, but it does come out. And this is where we see the dual extruders. This is definitely unique because we've got separate drive systems for each extruder. So each individual print head can be operated separately from each other. Wow, that's really neat. And right off the bat, just looking at all the build quality, it's very nice and solid. Everything is metal. So we're definitely gonna take a little more detailed view of all this stuff a little bit later in the video. All right, so let's go deeper. And uh, this is a ton of foam. I'm very impressed with the packaging. All right, and so below that looks like we have our base. We do have a removable build surface and not just any kind, it's a sheet metal. So it's one of those really thin pieces of metal and it looks like there's some kind of build tech style surface on top and it does flex really nicely. It also looks like we get two rolls of filament in a yellow and orange PLA. All right, so let's pull the base out. And wow, this thing is definitely very large. So I'm really excited to check out all the details of this thing. It's really interesting how everything is built. It really all feels industrial. It looks like everything for the box. So very well packed and way oversized. So let's take a quick look at what's inside this box. So it says parts and tools. And it looks like we do have quite a few things to see here. So we have two parts of the spool holder. It looks like really small coils of test filament for something. Some hardware, it looks like an idler pulley or something. And we do get some cutters, and these are the nicer ones. Our power cord, a sharpened spatula that's on an angle, a 10 and 8 millimeter open wrench, set of hex keys, 
and extra nozzle and it looks like guys that this printer has removable nozzle tips it's like a quick release very interesting we'll have to check that out another hex key that's like a full size with the handle that's kind of cool a usb cable to connect from the printer to your computer and it looks like here we have an sd card reader with the sd card in there so it is a full size 8 gig and the other end is a usb we also get a warranty card and also a leveling sheet that's kind of interesting so it does feel like a thin piece of plastic and it does say on here not to heat the bed before leveling it so i guess they want you to level the bed cold and that's everything in the box all right guys so i'm super excited to assemble this thing but before we do that let's flip it over and open the back if we can and I want to open up this cover so we can see inside and how everything's built. So it looks like there's quite a few little bolts I have to take off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right. And so after taking 12 little bolts out, which is quite a few of them, this top lid just comes right up and we can see the internals. So let's take a closer look at it. Starting back here with our power wires. So this is our plug and it is fused with an on and off switch. I like how they routed all the wires inside these protectors. So here we have the Y stepper motor, a fan back here, kind of all by itself, I guess, to cool the inside. We have a power supply here and we can change the voltages on the side. So it is a 24 volt, 500 watts and everything is nicely connected and crimped. So here's our main board and it is a 32 bit ARM processor. It is a MakerBase MKS Robin Pro version 1.0. But the great part is, is that we have removable stepper drivers. So those can be upgraded. And there is a large fan here that's an axial type that blows kind of like a little blower. So these stepper drivers have great cooling. So yeah, overall the board looks pretty nice and clean. So if we go here to the front, we can see this is our display board. And there's also a slot for full-size card here too. So, so yeah guys, looks pretty clean and nice under here. One detail I'm really liking is they have this extra frame here underneath to give the gantry a more solid connection. It's nice to see that they thought about all this because our gantry is quite heavy with the dual extruders. Hopefully this was helpful. I'm gonna put the lid back on, flip it around, and we'll start assembling it. All right, so let's see what our first step is. And by the way, here's our parameters. So our build volume is 310 by 310 by 350. So very nice, large size. And if you're wondering about the dimensions here, the printer dimensions and then the box dimensions here. So, so we have a nice little breakdown of where everything is, what's in the box, and then the assembly process. So it looks like our first step is to install the gantry on top of the base. And there's gonna be two bolts on each side that go from underneath. All right, so I'm just gonna set the gantry over. And right on the side here, there's little cutouts for the frame to sit in. Watch out for all the little wires everywhere. It should sit down right in there. So making sure that none of your wires are cut up on anything around the channel. So then we're gonna find our bolts and this baggie where this tensioner is. And there's gonna be four longer silver bolts like this. So two will go on one side and then two on the other. So this printer is quite heavy, but the best way to do it, I found out, is that you just raise one side and then we can put the bolts underneath. Also what helps is maybe using some kind of prop to hold the printer on the side. So I'm just gonna raise it up. I'm just using the spool holders that came with it. Hopefully they're strong enough to hold it. Put it under a foot here. And so the wrench that we'll need is this one that came with the printer and it is kind of long all right so yeah it looks like you're gonna have to lift up the printer even more with your hand to get to it but if you hold the motor here on the top as you're lifting it that way the gantry is not going to fall off but yeah we're just going to start our bolt on the wrench lift it up and start the bolt so this is a heavy printer so be careful yeah so the first bolt started now we're going to do the second one so we're not going to tighten it we're just going to get it close and the reason you don't want to tighten it is because we still have to start the other side so this side can move around if it needs to all right so now we can flip it around and do the other side so same thing here we're going to raise it up so these we can go ahead and snug up real good and you definitely want to tighten these pretty good because this is the only thing that's holding the gantry from moving back and forth all right and so that's pretty tight so now I'm gonna go back to the other side and tighten those up and we'll move to the next step. All right, and so our printer is together, the two main pieces. And you guys can see what it looks like here from the back. So the next part we're gonna be working on is on the top here. And here we have a feature that I feel like is absolutely necessary, which is this tethering belt here in between the two lead screws. Without the belt, you have the two sides kind of fighting each other because they're not tethered together. But when they're tethered like this, no matter what one side's doing, the other one's gonna do it with it. And so this is very important because the both sides of the X-axis always stay the same and they don't have a problem where they are off a little bit here and there. So definitely a great move there with the belt. Love this feature. So let's go ahead and cut the zip tie here. 
We can see we have more wires here. So there's a lot of wires on this printer because there's two of everything. But here you guys can see that the belt is actually quite loose right now. Now since I cut the zip tie, you want to make sure you don't move this because I think it's probably already adjusted where it's really level. But if you do want to recheck it, you basically want to measure anywhere from the x-axis down to the base and have the same measurement in between. But what we're doing here is putting this tensioner here on this belt. So that simply just goes over the belt like this. And the other part goes into the frame. There's a little tap there for one of these bolts. So we're simply just going to start it right there. And just like that, our belt is pretty tight. Now you can adjust the tightness right here. So it looks like it is all the way tight right now or close to it. But honestly, you don't need this belt very tight. You just need it moderately, barely tight. Because all it does, it just kind of tethers them together. So there's no actual real work that happens here. All right, so for the next part, we're going to be installing these spool holders here on the top. And so the first thing we want to do is put the round part that's going to hold the spool onto the frame. And it's going to go to the front, which where this filament detector is, like this. And we are using these bigger bolt with a washer on it so we're going to go through the back of the frame and then into the brass insert of the round part interesting part is they didn't include a wrench that big so if you have one or maybe you have pliers that'll work just fine i'm just going to use these little needle noses here to tighten it up and that's good right there and so this is the front so it goes to the front so we're looking at the back of the printer and that's literally going to sit in just like this with the filament detector to the front and there is a pre-drilled or tapped hole here and on top for a bolt on each side and the ones you use there are the ones that have this little plastic cap that you turn with your hand so one goes on the bottom and then one goes in the top here on the side so just hand tighten them and that's good right there so we're going to do the same thing to this other spool holder and then set it on this side and that's it and that's what our spool holders look like all right, so now we're looking to the front of the printer and I'm gonna go ahead and cut these zip ties off. And so that's gonna release our x-axis movement. So we do have some cables here, so watch out. And by the way, guys, all the cables are labeled. So this has a number four in the back of it and there's a number four right here. So these must plug in right here. Same thing for this side. So we're gonna get to the cable plugging in in a second. The next part in the manual is installing these nozzle clean out brackets. So it looks like they have some metal brushes here that the nozzle goes through to clean itself out. And these connect here underneath. So we, again, we see number 10 on the bracket and there's a number 10 right here so this one goes somewhere like this so yeah simply this bracket just goes underneath here like this and there's a hole here that this little bolt with a lock washer will go now in the manual they do show that there needs to be a washer on top of it between the bracket and the frame but i already put those washers into the spool holder and the reason i had to do that because without those washers the bolts didn't work. So let's go backwards for a second and go back to the spool holders. So you guys can see the washers there. So let me go ahead and take that off real quick. If I remove this washer where I think it needs to go down there and just use the bolt, actually that seemed to work fine. Maybe it was the other one I had trouble with. Take the washer out of this one. I remember when I first put the, yeah, it is this one. What's happening is whenever I tighten this one, it doesn't get tight enough where it snugs it up. It just is kind of loose. And this is why I thought the washer goes here. Apparently you don't need washers here. It's just this one here. I guess it's not able to tighten all the way. All right. So I don't know if you guys be able to see, but probably not. At the other end there, there was something, I guess, plastic melted over the threads. And so it didn't want to go through. But now that I ran it in and out a few times, it's going through all the way. So now we can install it all the way and it should tighten. Yep. There it goes. All right, so we do also have lock washers, I'm guessing we'll use for the bottom. And then we'll go through the frame and then put our washer on. And then after that, we're gonna go through the thread right underneath there. And so on mine, looks like I need to pull it all the way towards me because if I don't, it's gonna hit this bracket here. So I'm gonna tighten it right there. We'll see how that works. So you guys can see the bracket here. So the nozzle goes over it and it rubs on these little brushes here to clean itself off. So when it goes all the way this way, there's still room to purge in here. All right, so now we're looking at the front of the printer on the other side. Here we can see it says number nine, and that'll go right here. The same way, we'll bolt the spacer washer and tighten it in there. All right, so that looks good right there. All right, guys, so we are almost done assembling this thing. All we gotta do next is plug everything in. So let's just start here on the top. We have the filament detectors. There's little wires that come out and plug into there. And also the other side. So this side seems a little bit of a stretch here, but Still looks okay, I think. So the two filament detectors are plugged in. So as we go down, we see these two ribbon cables. Now again, everything is labeled. So we can see it says number four and there's a number four right here. And so these are simple, just click in into the plug. So you wanna be kind of careful with these cause they're, you know, quite fragile. There's a lot of little connectors on the 
carefully pushing it in and it'll click in. So let's go to this side, number three, which goes here, same way. So if we go down, you can see there's a number seven here, also clicks in the same way, and a number eight on the other side. So if we go to the back of the printer, we can see we need to plug in our stepper drivers. So one on this side and the other one on the other side. All right. And so if we look over here to the side, there's two more plugs. There's a black plug and a white plug. And the black one goes here, but it's a little bit too short. So I think I have to pull it out here because it's barely reaching for some reason. Okay, guys. So maybe the black plug has to go to the white socket here. And the reason I think that's correct well, first of all, they made it that way because it doesn't reach any other way. And the other part that gives you the hit is on the other side, there's only one plug. Y plug is actually for the Z axis switch. And this side is the dark plug that plugs into the white socket. So I believe that's how it goes. And so on this side, we'll do the same thing and just kind of reverse the plug. So it's a little bit confusing, but hopefully that's correct. I'm going to put this thing back in there. You really need these wires tucked here because the bed travels through here and you don't want those wires to be hitting the bed. So yeah, black goes on white and white on black. So we got one more plug to plug back here, which is the heated bed, and that comes out the back of the printer there, and that'll simply plug right into here. So make sure it's long enough to travel all the way, looks like it is, that's good right there. All right, so we got two more ribbon cables to plug in, and that's the last two. So we have one and five and six and two. So one and five goes here. Let's go ahead and click the five in. So the white part of it is gonna go this way, and then the one is going to go like that into the hot end assembly. Just like that. Same thing on this side. We'll do the hot end assembly first. And then we got number nine right here. So, yeah, that's it. So, let's take a closer look at this printer and you can see it is huge. Maybe from this angle here, you can see the 27 inch iMac back there. And yeah, it's a quite a large printer and very tall and takes up a lot of room. All right, so let's start here on the top. We have the two spool holders with the two filament detectors. We got the tethered belt between the two Z-axis leads. On the top of each elite screw, we do have this bracket with a bearing. Everything is metal that can be metal on this printer. Feels really high quality. So our Z-axis runs on V-channel rollers up and down, and also our Y-axis on this widespread separate channels, three rollers on each side. But our X-axis runs on a linear rail so that's really neat. And obviously the coolest thing about this printer is that it has two heads that have separate motors. So we have a motor here and an idler pulley there. And the other side, we have the idler pulley and the motor here. And these are in-stop switches for both sides. So the X-axis literally has a double of everything. And the print head assembly themselves are direct drive extruders. So everything is inside the stepper motor, the heating blocks, our fans here are on the side for the heat break. And there's another fan back there for the parts cooling. You can kind of see it right here, the duct. So there's a lot going on in just these two heads here. And on top of all that, it looks like we do have removable nozzle where you just push a button and pulls it out. So we're gonna try that here in a second. Well, let's go ahead and look what's underneath here. So we do have a silicone sock over the heat block. And the heat block is made out of some other material, looks like of a gold color, like copper or something a bit. I'm not sure if it's the same thing, the usual, but it is a different color. So theoretically, if we push on this button here, we should be able to pull out the nozzle. But I don't think it's going to come out by hand. I think we need to like kind of pry it out a bit. All right, so let's go ahead and try it. So push the button. And I'm going to try to pry it out. Okay, it goes out really easy, actually. And there it goes. It just fell out. And that's what our tip looks like. It looks like the PTFE tubing is kind of already embedded into there. But yeah, that's a pretty neat design. So technically we should be able to just push this button, slide it back in, and there it goes. Just like that. Simple enough. Well, that works pretty good. So I'm not sure why you would want that. I guess if you're changing the nozzle size, or I guess if you get a clog, you can change it really quick, but pretty cool. So that's quite unique. So on each side of the X axis, we do have these brushes that clean off the tips. And we are using these ribbon cables. I'm not sure exactly how that's, you know, gonna work. They seem to be kind of bending in funny ways, but I guess that's fine as these things should last a long time because they are used commercially in a lot of things. And it gives the printer overall just a unique and more cleaner look using these ribbon cables instead of the normal wires everywhere. So yeah, as we go down, we get this really large printing surface. And one of the best things about it, it is removable. So very happy to see that. There's a nice large tab here to grab it. And so under the bed, we have nice large adjustable knobs, but there is no insulation. So not sure how big of a deal that is, but it is quite a large area to heat, but that's gonna depend on the power supply. So coming to the front, this is our face, 
and there's a protector over it so I'm going to go ahead and peel that off. So we got the logo here in the front, our screen, and this looks like one of those old school screens from back in the day with our control knob that clicks. And here we have features, silent board, high accuracy, dual extruder, and pre-assembled. So not exactly sure why they put this here. It almost looks like they're buttons, but they're not. It's just marketing. And we do have a warning label here for high temperatures, leveling the bed before printing, and other cautions. On the other side, we have a QR code for sales and support. So the base of the printer has a really nice profile. It's quite thin. It's quite attractive looking. Everything is metal. And on this side, we do have the power selector. So depending on where you live, make sure you've selected the right voltage. And going to the right side of the printer, this is where we have our full-size SD card slot and the USB port to connect to the computer. So looking at the back of the printer, we can see our X-axis stepper drivers on each side. We can kind of see our belt system for each extruder. So here we can see our Z-axis end stop switch. Then we have two motors on each side with two lead screws going up and tethered on the top. So looking down on the back, we can see our Y-axis switch for the build plate. And it goes quite back far when it clicks. So like I said earlier, guys, keep in mind, you need quite a bit of room for this printer. And on the very back, we have a cable that comes out to the hotbed, the cooling fan, some venting. And over here, we have a sticker that's warning you that the voltage is set to 110 and to make sure that you have good ground. So we can go ahead and peel that off. And that reveals our plug for the power socket. It is fused and there's our switch. All right, and that is the whole printer. So yeah, it's quite a unique machine. So I am pretty excited to see what these dual extruder hot ends are capable of. So for next part, let's power it on, check, make sure everything works, and level the bed. All right, so I got the printer plugged in in the back. Let's go ahead and hit the power button. Boots up. You can see the Marlin logo. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Now right off the bat, guys, I can hear the fans. They're quite loud. And a lot of that seems to be coming from underneath. All right, so let's go ahead and go to motion and then out of hold. See what happens. So this side hold, that side homed. Now the Y axis, and now the Z is coming down. All right, so it looks like all of our axes work. So what we need to do next is level the bed with this spacer here that was included. Now you don't have to use this. You can use like a sheet of paper or something, but this is a little thicker than a paper. And so the way you level the bed on this printer, since it doesn't come with any kind of bed leveling assistant, is the old school way where you disable the stepper motor. So we're gonna go back into motion and disable steppers. And that's gonna give us the ability to move the both of the hot ends around. So let's just start with hot end number one here, or we'll call it the left one, I guess. And then after we run this one around, we can check this one. Now, I'm not sure if there's any adjustments up and down, but I'm thinking that the way to adjust it is there might be some play in the nozzle back and forth just a little bit. We'll see if we need to do that or not. So yeah, this would be pretty much the usual thing that you do when you level the bed. You go to every corner. So here we are on the first corner and it's loose. So we're gonna unscrew the knob to go up. And there we go, so let's hit it. Now let's go to this corner. Loose here. Feels good right there. All right, and that corner is way too tight. So we need to tighten it up. There it goes. Go to this corner. So yeah, basically you're just gonna go around the corners until you get it all the same everywhere. So, and as you move one corner, another corner moves too. So I would say definitely go around at least four or five times until you get it just right. And then after you get it pretty good, we're gonna go to the middle and check that. So the middle does seem a little low. Since nothing is preheated, most likely it'll expand a little bit and become bigger. So you might wanna leave it just a tiny bit looser than too tight. But if we do need to adjust it later, we can adjust each knob the same amount to go up and down on the whole platform. All right, so this extruder looks good. Let's check the other one. And it should be the same as the other one. And sure enough, it is pretty close. It seems a little tighter. Yeah, so it's a little bit tighter on this one. So what I'm going to try to do is loosen it and see if it will go up anymore because I just need a really small amount. Maybe you can see right there the different gaps. So it's a really, really small amount. Like they practically are the same. So maybe it's going to be okay. Home it again to double check it. Click on auto home. Just to make sure everything's okay. Perfect, just like it was earlier. And this one is good too. All right. So this is what our screen looks like. We have both of the nozzles here, the bed, the axes, the fan speed, flow rate, and then progress bar. If we click on it, we got info, motion, temperature, configuration, filament, change, initialize media, and release media. So if we go to motion, you can see we can move axes individually or out of hold. Temperature controls, that's where our preheat PLA is. So let's go ahead and click that, make sure everything will preheat. So we have quite a few options here. We can just preheat PLA and also the bed. I'm just gonna click preheat all. 
started to preheat. So we can do quite a few things here. So if we go to this index mode here, we can see that we have out of park, duplication, mirror copy, and full control. So I guess depending on how you want to print, you would choose these. So we're going to have to figure this out. We do have advanced settings here also where you can play around with the configuration a little more. But yeah, as far as the interface here, it's the usual old school Marlin interface. So let's go ahead and install this SD card and we'll see if there's anything on it. And it does go upside down. Let's go all the way down to initiate media, print from SD card. And here we can see we have a few files. I don't really see any G code. Let's see what's in this here. A testing STL model. So we got the slicing software and the video. Okay, so it looks like that's our only model here that's available to test. Now, before we try to print that, we do need to put our filament in. Now, let's see, make sure. So our bed preheated, and it looks like our hot ends are preheated too, according to the display here. So let's go ahead and load up these two rolls here on each. So we got an orange and a yellow. So we're going to feed through the filament detector. Same thing on the other one. So I'm going to cut it on an angle and put this side here in this extruder and the other one on the other side. So this is actually the release arm for the extruder inside. So to push the filament in, you got to push this button here and then you can go through the extruder assembly. And so you can purge that yourself. So you can do it through the software or just, you know, push it down yourself, which is obviously easier and quicker. And same thing for this side. So yeah, pretty simple. Just going to push it and then push our filament down and it's going to purge into these boxes here. You guys can see we purged in there. All right, so I couldn't get anything to print from that card that it came with. So I put in another card that I know I have some files on. And I do have a calibration cube here. So let's try to print that. And I am in mirror mode, I think, right now. So, so this would be quite interesting to see what happens because I just used a random G-code file and set the printer to mirror mode in the index. Let's see what happens. So it looks like everything is up to heat. All right, so we got one nozzle going and the other all right there it goes okay so they're literally working from the opposite side so it's purging on each end and there it goes wow look at that okay so they're literally mirroring each side of the g-code wow that's pretty cool okay so you can literally stick any g-code in there as long as you have the room or the file so this is a calibration cube so it's quite small well that's super cool it looks like both nozzles are adjusted quite good so that's our extruder number one and that's the second one wow it's really interesting to see them work together on two different models on the same bed all right well that's super cool so we got it started and everything's fine looks like and it's printing away on both ends now here's something interesting. Look at what the display is showing. It must be some kind of screensaver or something. Let's see if I click what happens. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on, but it's actually not even letting me do anything. Or if it is, I don't want to push too much buttons and mess something up. But yeah, that's kind of weird. So it was moving some animations, but now it completely froze. Now that might be some kind of glitch because of what I did and how I started these prints here, but we'll have to see. So I'm going to let these things finish and uh, yeah, we'll take a closer look at the calibration cubes. And by the way guys, I just want to mention that I don't think this printer has the silent stepper drivers because I still am getting the stepper motor sound out of it. So I'm going to bring in the microphone. So I'm not sure if this printer is maybe a pre-production model or what, but I still can hear the stepper motors. All right guys, so the printer just finished and yeah, it looks like there was no issues and it printed out and it looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and turn it off. So let's see how easy these things pop off. Oh wow, perfect. That's great. So they seem like they stuck good, but also popped off quite easily. So it's gonna be a little bit harder to see on these colors, but you guys can see that the print quality is really good. So there's not really any ghosting, looks like, maybe very minor. And it appears to be very fine printer vibrations. So this thing is doing a really good job right off the bat. So this is our x-axis wall. Very nice. And the y-axis wall. So you can see on the y there's a little bit more vibration. Still very good. Top and the bottoms. So it looks like our yellow is a little closer to the bill plate than our orange here. I guess there was something on the bed that got stuck there. That's that little dot. But overall very nice and impressive. So let's go ahead and measure both cubes with this caliper. So let's do the X, not bad. 
the Y also the same and the Z is a little bit short let's check this other one real quick this X is a little bigger the Y is pretty good and the Z is quite a bit smaller so not perfect but not bad quite acceptable for 3d printing and obviously there could be variations in the filament and things like that so the important part is the x and the y and it seems to be very accurate there all right so it seems like a good start with the calibration cubes i'm going to turn the printer back on so this time let's go to configuration and we will it will go to the idex mode i guess that's what you call it so we tried the mirrored copy so the next thing i want to do is duplication so it should print the same thing exactly on the other hot end and then we got out of park and i think this is where if you want to use a single extruder you park the other one so we'll try that after the duplication now they have a full control i'm not sure what that does i guess that's for probably more advanced users all right so let's click on duplication so the printer is going to set itself up for that try to find another file here now let's go ahead and print two tree frogs duplicated to each other so the bed heats up reasonably quick considering how big it is and there's no insulation on the bottom so it must be that 500 watt power supply right at two minutes and the bed is heated to 50 and the nozzles are at 180 right now so it only takes about three minutes this looks like at the most to get started all right so it's been exactly three minutes and it started so it holds so they're both purging but because they're in duplicated mode you guys can see that this nozzle here or this extruder is now in the middle of the build plate which is kind of interesting so whenever it was in mirror, it was purging here, but now it was purging in the middle. So this is doing exactly what this side is doing, replicate that on this side. So this is quite interesting and unique. All right, so yeah, both sides are printing exactly the same model, which is the tree frog. Very cool. And this printer, just looking at it, is very interesting because of the two extruders printing together. It just makes it really unique. Very interesting just to look at it. Now, if you don't know why having two extruders like this is helpful, is because you can print the same part, as long as it's not a large part, twice as fast. So if you need multiple items, it's like having two printers in one printing on the same build plate. So if you're someone that prints a lot of the same thing, this could really speed up your process. All right, and so our frock's completed, and I noticed that this one here lifted off the bed, kind of messed up on his hand, and I think because I wasn't close enough. So I just need to tighten that up. But other than that, it seems like it turned out really good. And I don't know if you guys are going to be able to tell in the reflection, but the print quality is pretty much excellent. It's quite impressive. So it's really hard to see on these colors. I'm going to print some dark prints here in a second. So yeah, we can see here where the hand broke loose and somehow it's still finished. But let's take a look at the other one. So this one's stuck a little better. See if I can erase the bill plate a little bit to break it loose. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. Pretty simple. So this one turned out pretty much perfect. So the printer puts the layers down really good. Very impressive. Yeah, even this part of the frog here ends up not being very good. It's nice and smooth. So there's a little bit of stringing between the eyes, but very minor. Pops right off. So this was sliced for another printer, but it still prints perfect. So yeah guys, right off the bat, really impressive of how this printer is doing. So I'm going to change the filament to a darker color so we can see a little better of what's really happening. And also mess around with the settings and figure out how to print in each mode. All right, so I successfully printed a Benchy. So this was just printed with a single extruder with this darker color. And you guys can see it turned out really good. So the layers are sitting really nice. I'm quite impressed with how well it's doing for what kind of printer this is. So that's the back there. And you can see the Y vibrations are a little bit more than the X. The X is actually quite clean. You can kind of see here on the top how clean the X is. And the Y has a little bit more vibration. So, so yeah, right off the bat, this very impressive printer. And even the cooling is great on it. There's not anything hanging much at all. So very nice. It looks like we did have a little bit of under extrusion right there on the top. I'm not sure what that was all about. But other than that, it's great. And the interesting part is we have a slit here on the box. And every time I see this, this always means the printer is very accurate. Very cool. So I think for the next part, we should try to do some other prints, especially something with dual color and things like that of what this printer is really capable of.
So I quickly want to go over about configuration because every time you do a print, you got to go to IDEX mode and depending on what you want to print, you're going to choose either out of park duplication or mirror copy. So if you're printing on just a normal print with one nozzle, then you're going to do out of park. It's going to put the other nozzle away and just use the one on the left and duplicate as you guys saw that's going to use both nozzles to just duplicate the same print like we did on the frog now with duplication you do have to make sure that you slice it correctly where you have enough room for both nozzles and you need at least 80 millimeters in between the two so they can function correctly and then you got mirror copy which just twists one of the models in a mirror like format so it'll be the same thing just mirrored and i'm not sure exactly what full control would be for but i guess that gives you control completely over the code of what to do with the two nozzles so another important thing to note if you're going to do color prints you're going to go to auto park also so auto park works with the single print and the color print and speaking about color print let's go to the computer and slice something in color so you guys can see how that works all right guys so here we are at the computer and i'm going to go ahead and open cura and this is what we're going to be used to slice now if you're just going to make a regular file obviously you would slice that normally but we're going to do a dual color here because that's the most complicated one so what you're looking at is the artist d i have set up already but let's just go through the process here so we're going to go to add printer so if you just download a cure or you're adding printer this is what you're going to see here so we're going to go to non-network printer we're going to choose custom rename it down here so let's just call it artist d and we'll add that and so next we're going to go to our parameters here so we're going to put in 310 on the x 310 on the y and 240 on the z we're going to select the heated bed and then the most important part is a number of extruders here we're going to put that to two because that's how many we have click up here on extruder number one and we're going to change the material diameter to 1.75 and on the extruder too, same thing. Yeah, and that's basically it. Now we're gonna click next, and this is what we see. So this is our build volume. So to slice a normal model in, you would just throw it in here and then click over here and then adjust all of it here. Now let me go ahead and switch to the one I already had, which is this one here. It's basically the same thing, it's just I have all this already adjusted. So let's go ahead and do a color print of the space guy. So I'm gonna drag in both of the files and you can see how they're separated. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna assign which extruder is gonna do what. So the first extruder is your one on the left, which is your main one, and your second extruder is the one on the right. So depending on what extruder you want to go, usually you'd want your one on the left to be your main extruder. So this is gonna be on these parts here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna select it by clicking on it, and you can see right here on the left side, it says number one and it's highlighted. So this is our extruder one, but here is also extruder one. So what we need to do is click on this other one and reassign it to extruder 2 so we're going to right click and then just choose extruder 2 here and it's going to change color so now we have extruder 1 and extruder 2 but what we need to do is we need to combine these two models together so we're going to select one and then click shift and select the other one and that's going to highlight both of them and then we're going to right click and we're going to click on merge models down here we can see how both of them combine into one single model even though you can see the shades are different the lighter shade is our extruder one and the darker shade is extruder two and as simple as that you got your model ready to go and you can scale it from here move it around once you merge it they're going to stay together and all your controls are here for moving it scaling it rotating it now the more important thing is over here where our parameters are so you want to set all these parameters how you want so i'm setting 0.2 for this model because it's a larger model so it'll so I want to be a little more efficient, so 0.2 is a better option. I normally print in 0.16 everything, but for larger models, I'll go to 0.2. So all this stuff is pretty much generic, except for the temperature here. And I just have everything at 200 and the build plate at 50. Now the standby temperature here is quite important. If the standby temperature is too low, you might have pretty big pauses in between because by the time the other nozzle heats up, you will have to wait before it can print. So I just leave that on the same temperature because it changes quite quick within a minute or less. It, you know goes to the next nozzle every layer has to change if there's a lot of color difference in the models now if the color is not changing constantly throughout the layers you know you might want to turn this down so it's not constantly sitting there preheating at full temperature so i print everything at 50 to get a good reference first layer of 15 so it sticks well and goes slow retraction we got at five millimeters you can adjust up and down depending so everything is pretty generic here now the important part is actually here you can adjust all this once you adjust number one because if you look up here there's our tab that says number one extruder one you need to go to extruder two and check make sure everything is the same because once you go to the extruder two tab all of this stuff would be different than the first one where you change that so just go back and check 
connect both of them and adjust both of them to be the same if that's what you want. So the idea here is that you can control two completely separately from extruder one, including all the slicing for it also, which makes it quite unique and very useful if you're going to do different kind of materials and whatnot else. So, but yeah, once you get all that done, all you got to do is click the slice button and it's going to slice the model. And sliced in here, we can see it's going to take 9 hours and 55 minutes. And that's probably very inaccurate. And the reason for that is because it doesn't take account of changing between the two heads and preheating each head and things like that. So this could be significantly more, maybe not double, but another half or so could be added to this. Like it could go from 10 hours to 14, 15 hours easily. So, you know, depending on how everything is set, this will definitely change. But yeah, if you click on preview, you can see all the layers. So we can see how the layers will go be going down. So yeah, all you got to do is save it now to the provided SD card and then put it in the printer and print it out. Now for duplicate prints, I guess this is for duplicate and mirrored prints, you want to set this in between in the center of half of your bed. So if your half of the bed is around here, the line, so you want to be about centered there because the other nozzle is going to do exactly the same thing on this side. So you could probably go to about 100 and I don't know how much, 30, 20 wide and definitely much longer since you have more room this way up to 300 I guess. But yeah, this makes it really neat where you can print two separate things at once. All right guys, and our astronaut has finished and he turned out pretty good overall. So the bed has cooled off relatively all the way so it is a little bit warm but see if this thing will pop off okay i'm not sure if it will i'm going to go ahead and pick up the whole bed here we can see it's quite easy we're just going to flex it and the model just pops right off it's pretty awesome so i really really like this bed this is a great feature on this printer and also everything's been sticking very well to it so there was no issue there either so let's take a closer look at the astronaut so i used bronze and silver and the bronze turned out really nice and shiny but the silver kind of became more matte like it started off pretty good here on the bottom you can see it's kind of shiny and then it went matte for some reason and then it had a few little shifts here between more silver and matte so now the reason it makes me think that it had that because all the silver pieces were small amounts of printing and so i think the filament it was overheating or just kind of losing its composition by sitting and waiting till it's its turn again but on the bronze we don't see that because there's a lot more to print so all of that not so good stuff went into the infill because it does the outer layer last but yeah other than that it looks really nice and you guys can see how you can print dual colors here on this printer so everything turned out really good and the nozzles seem to be lining up. So if you do have a misalignment between the two colors, you can't adjust that in the printer. And with this model here, we don't have much surface to stick to and you can see that it's stuck very well to the bed. We can see some vibrations in the print here and there, but this is very acceptable for what this is. Very nice. Now one of the things that it's not so good at is when it needs only a tiny bit of color, it seems to not do very good. It seems like it doesn't purge out enough before it prints. So I think some of that stuff can be adjusted in the slicer, but yeah, the potential is definitely there and overall very successful print. And it's just so cool how two different extruders can print the same model in different colors. Alright guys, so these are all the prints that I printed and we tried the functions that these two nozzles can do, which obviously can do single nozzle printing, like we printed this Benchy, duplication mode, mirror mode, and also the dual color, the astronaut, and actually another one that I printed, which let's take a look at them real quick. So this model here is called the Squirtle and it turned out pretty good also, but you guys can see that I had a little bit of under extrusion, which I did figure out eventually, well I think I did what was going on, but, but as far as combining the two colors, you guys can see see it turns out really nice now there's still more tweaking to do to get this thing right because i haven't done too much color printing i'm still kind of learning myself of how to adjust everything in all the right settings but if we look on the silver here we can see that the layers themselves are sitting really nice and that's the thing about this printer it just puts the layers down really good so even on the blue filament where it is more flat here you can kind of see that it does look pretty good the way the layers are put down they're very accurate and smooth 
and the bed sticks very well also I have no issues whatsoever with the bed this whole time so yeah this little squirtle is a good companion for the astronaut so one of the things I also wanted to print were these gears and I did print them in mirror mode and they both turned out great and are functional now this white one here I had a little bit of a hard time to break it loose because my nozzle was too close to the bed but it still spins as you can see here so the bottom was a little bit fused all together, but that broke pretty easily. And then the red one here was perfect. I just took it off the bed and it spun right out really smoothly. So the printer's got accuracy for sure. Now I still had under extrusion problems and it's all over this print, but if you can see, not so much here. And so that takes us to the next prints, which are these bolt screws I did. And I still had extrusion problems. So this is our extruder number one and extruder number two. And the left one seemed like it had more of the issues. But if you guys look up higher here, you can see that there's no more problems after that. And basically what was happening is there was not enough heat in the nozzle. And, and it couldn't keep up with the flow. So this nozzle wanted a little bit more heat than this one. But I upped them both to 215 and after that there was no issue whatsoever. So you can see here from mid bottom, pretty much perfect. And these threads are just really nice. So the printer has got really, really good potential and really delivering that print quality for being such a unique machine. Now the last model I printed here is the spaceship and it's still stuck to the bed. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove all these models. We'll take the bed off. So this is not a very large model here. It is 240 millimeters tall. But yeah, taking a model like this off would be very hard unless we have this kind of bed. So let's go ahead and flex it and see how easy it comes off. And you guys can see it just lifts right off. And then we'll flex it the other way. And it does pop right off, but I was a little hasty with it, and I still ended up breaking one of the legs. But yeah, as far as build surfaces go, this is one of the best kind you can have. Now, this kind of printer is already really fragile, because it's got only a few layers on the bottom, and then it's just one layer all the way around in spiralized mode. So any little bit of pressure will just crack it, usually. But if we look at it up close here, guys, you can see how nice the layers went down. And we can see here on one of these boosters here how nice it really is. So bottom is good, sides are great, and in this region here we can see usually a lot of noise, and there is a little bit of noise here in this window, and usually this logo here has a lot of noise in it, but this printer you guys can see it's quite minimal. And going to the top here you guys can see we did have an issue, and this had to do with what I said earlier about having under extrusion, so I upped the temperature, but I guess it was too high for this single layer filament, and so I ended up melting it and it's kind of falling apart here. So. But if we just look at the print, you can see how nice the layers are sitting. So as we went up, we were doing really good until the very top. We kind of melted a little and the ball actually turned out too. But overall, guys, I feel like I could have tuned this thing in to the point where I was really happy with it with a little bit more time in the settings. So since I had to start from scratch in the Cura settings, there were some things in there that was not adjusted correctly compared to using a profile that was ready. But nevertheless, the printer performed very well, and we can see that in the print quality. And obviously, the coolest thing about this printer are the two individual extruder heads that move independently from each other to do duplicate or mirror printing. But not only that, able to do a color print with the two separate heads and you can get really creative with that because you can use different materials so instead of looking at it as a dual color printer you can look at it as a dual material printer so you can print ABS and PLA together or let's say TPU and ABS PLA with TPU so there's options with two different materials because of the two separate print heads and they can be adjusted in the slicer individually for temperature speed and all that stuff so so there's a lot of great things about this printer like the tethered dual Z rod the linear rail X axis this large sized heated print bed with magnetically removable steel print sheet full size SD card filament detectors 500 watt power supply which heats up this bed really quick and just the overall very solid of everything pretty much being metal everywhere now one thing that does kind of feel old is this display with the knob so it's understandable why they have to go this route of cost savings and maybe just a more proven UI but in any case guys this is the JG Maker Artist D 3D printer and it's definitely unique of what it does and definitely delivers a lot more than your typical 3D printer so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video of the unboxing and overview so if you're interested in this printer there's gonna be some links in the description where you can support this printer to production and being an early backer get a great deal on it so check out the links below and if you guys enjoyed this video then hit that like button and if you want to see more videos like this I got a lot more 3d printing stuff coming up so stay tuned and also check out my playlist I have quite a few reviews on 3d printers there and as always guys thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one peace